Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about gun upgrades and so we're going to start by adding ammo to the game so that Adventure Girl will have a limited amount of ammo and once she runs out of ammo she'll have to like break a crate or something to collect more ammo. Uh, we're also going to be adding crates to the game that are going to drop down from the sky and when we melee attack them they will restore our ammo. Um, we're also going to be adding an ammo upgrade to the game so that once we have our ammo we can buy upgrades to increase how much we have. We'll also be doing a bullet damage upgrade so that when Adventure Girl shoots, we can buy uh, uh, damage upgrades that make her deal more damage to the zombies. And we're going to do a bullet penetration upgrade as well so that when she shoots, it doesn't just go through one zombie. It can actually go through more than one zombie uh, as we buy higher bullet penetration upgrades. The first thing we're going to do is add ammo to our game. And to do that, we're going to go ahead into our variables and create a variable called ammo. And then the idea is going to be for now, when our game starts, we're going to go ahead and set that ammo equal to a certain amount. So we will find ammo and we'll set ammo equal to, I'm going to start it with five ammo. Uh, so then when we click start, we get five ammo to start with. Uh, the next thing we want to do is in Adventure Girl, where she shoots, we, won't, we don't now just want it to be whenever she clicks mouse down, she shoots. We want this to actually check how much ammo she has. And uh, if she doesn't have enough ammo, she won't be able to shoot. So we are going to say if the mouse is down, and if uh, our ammo is greater than zero. So if our ammo is greater than zero, then we can shoot. Otherwise, it just won't run this code at all. The other thing we want is to say uh, we will change our ammo by minus one every time we actually do shoot. And if I click start and start the game, we should see we start with some ammo. Uh, when we run out, uh, we aren't able to shoot anymore, even though I'm clicking the mouse down. Now that we have her ammo working, the next thing I want to do is give her a mechanism so she can replenish her ammo. And the way I'm going to do that is with uh, crates that are going to come down from the sky and they're going to land at various places. And when she hits them with her melee, she's going to be able to refill her ammo. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and upload our uh, sprite for the crate. Uh, this is part of the graveyard tile set, which I have linked in the description. Um, and I'm going to change the size to 30 so that it's a little bit smaller. And I'm going to stick it right up here at the top because I want them to spawn at the top and then they'll fall back down. So we're going to start by having it set at the position to the very top, uh, and we're going to also hide our original one. And then we are going to spawn them forever, but we're only going to spawn them forever if we are in the uh, state of game, because we don't want them to spawn when they're in the shop or when we're on the welcome screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, while uh, we were going to repeat our spawning code until we are not uh, in the game state. So uh, we are going to repeat the spawning code until we are not in the state game. And then the spawning code is just going to be really simple. It's going to be, we're going to have a wait. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit random. So boxes will spawn every one to three seconds. And then we're going to have it create a clone of itself. So it'll wait three seconds, create a or one to three seconds, create a clone of itself. It will keep running this code until we are no longer on the game state. And then it'll stop running it. And then it'll start it again once we re-enter the game state. I also want it to fall. So when it starts as a clone, uh, we need to do a few things. The first thing we want to do is show it. Um, and then we want to fall down. So we're going to say repeat until we are touching the uh, repeat until we are touching the ground hitbox. We're just going to decrease it by a few. Uh, we're going to change the Y by a negative value. So we'll change it by maybe like negative five. And then our, our crates will fall into the ground like that. And this is looking uh, pretty good. Uh, you'll notice that the crates move with us right now. The crates stay right where they are in the screen. Uh, we want these crates to move relative to Adventure Girl. So that if Adventure Girl is running forward, the crate is like moving backwards with the, with the screen, like with the background. So now what we want to do to have it move uh, relative to our scrolling backdrop is we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call this one uh, XPause Crate. And make sure that you check this one. This is going to be for this sprite only because we're, we're going to have to have separate variables for every clone. So for this sprite only. We're going to create that variable and then we're going to add in another chunk of code here that says when I start as clone, we're going to go ahead and write this to control uh, its position. So we're going to say uh, we start by creating by setting the uh, create X position zero to whatever we want. So I'm going to have it choose randomly somewhere on the top here. So that's going to be somewhere between negative 220 and 220. And then I want to have it go to that position. So we're going to have it go to once we set its position, we're going to have it actually go there. So we will say uh, the Y will stay the same, but the X we just set to something. So we'll have it go to its X pause crate position. And then uh, we're going to put in a forever loop. And now in this forever loop, we're going to be updating the crate's position relative to Adventure Girl speed. So if Adventure Girl is moving forward, the crate's moving backward. If she's moving backward, the crate's moving forward. It's sort of the same way the backdrop is moving backward and forward. So to start that, we're going to go ahead and change uh, the crate X position. 
and we're going to change it by the reverse of Adventure Girl's speed. So we'll say zero minus whatever her current speed is. Because uh, remember, if Adventure Girl's moving one way, we want to we want to go the other way. And then we want to actually uh, we've now changed the variable, but we still need to set the position. Uh, so we will say go to the new x position of the crate and go to the same y position because we're not updating the y position here. And so now if we click start, uh, these should be working a little bit better. Uh, the crates now come in, uh, but you'll notice they get stuck at the edge here. And they get stuck at the edge here uh, because we haven't put in the code. When crates go off the screen, they should be shown or hidden. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an if else statement and we're going to say um, if our crates x position, so if the crates x position is less than the uh, edge of the screen, the left edge of the screen, which is uh, negative 240. So if we're off the edge on the left side, or if we are off the edge on the other side, so if we're off the edge on the left side, or if we're off the edge on the right side, if we are greater than 240 or less than negative 240, then we want to hide it because we would be at the edge. Otherwise, we want to show it. And if I start that real quick, uh, we should. this should work. There you go. So they vanish when we get to the edge of the screen. If we go back, you'll see the crates will reappear. Looking good. The other thing I want to do for this is we don't want these crates to keep spawning forever. So if you don't know, there's a clone limit in Scratch. You can only have so many clones on a page. So we don't want our whole game to just be taken up with crates that we're not even looking at anymore. So the other thing I want to add here is that if we get too far away from a crate, uh, I want to have it delete itself. So we're going to say if the crate's x position is greater than uh, 480, so if it's, it's, if it's way off the screen, um, then we are just going to delete the clone uh, because we don't want it taking up, basically, we don't want it counting towards our clone limit. Now, the one other thing we want here is we want that when we actually hit one of these clones, we want to uh, give Adventure Girl back her ammo. So uh, we're going to say when we start its clone, uh, I'm going to put in a wait until, and we're going to wait until we are touching the melee hitbox. Um, because as soon as we're touching the melee hitbox, whenever that happens, we're going to destroy the crate. So we will delete the clone and we will also, uh, reset her ammo. So we will set her ammo, change ammo, uh, or here we'll say set adventure girls ammo back to five is what we're using right now. So now when I click start and I run this and I will shoot a few times to run out of ammo. Now when a crate falls and I break it open, you'll see I'm back to five ammo again. And the one other thing we want to do is that when we receive change, whenever we're, we're changing or whenever we're changing state, we want to go ahead and delete all these uh, crates so that they don't stick around when we restart the game. We don't want like a bunch of crates sitting around us. So when we receive the message that we are changing stage, we're just going to go ahead and delete all of the uh, all of our clones, all of our crates so that when the game starts again, we're starting fresh with no crates from previous rounds. So now that we have ammo in the game, the next thing I want to do is add our maximum ammo upgrade so we can act so we can actually change like the maximum amount of ammo that we can have. And so to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy. I'm going to duplicate the health upgrade because the code again is going to be very similar. And I'm going to call this the ammo upgrade. And then for the ammo upgrade, we're going to create a new variable called max ammo, just like we did for health. We're going to change this to max ammo and we're going to start it at five and we're going to change this to max ammo and again start it at five and then all this other code stays exactly the same uh, you can go ahead and go in here and tweak the values of these so i'm going to make the ammo a little bit more expensive i think the ammo is a little more valuable but just make sure whenever you update one of these you also need to update the costume name so i'm going to make this 60 and then i'm going to update the costume name to 60 and i'm going to make this i think 100 and let's say 80 and we'll update this to 180. And as long as you're updating both of these, all the math should work out. So none of the rest of this code really has to change at all. And we're going to upgrade it instead of upgrading it by five. I don't know why I said five. It should be max. Uh, we're going to change it by two. So every time they get an upgrade, they get two more bullets. And so then all you need to do to make this work is just go into anywhere where you were using ammo and just set the max ammo, uh, set the ammo to the max ammo. So when we start the game, we start at full ammo. And when we break a crate, we also get full ammo. So instead of setting ammo to five, we just set it to whatever the maximum amount of ammo is. So now when we click start and we run our game, uh, and we'll die real quick, we can buy some, oops, we also forgot to position this. Let me move this over here, uh, right there. Okay, and as you can see, I've also in the process of moving that, I bought a bunch of upgrades, so that's perfect. And you'll see now my maximum ammo is nine and we get reset to nine ammo. If I use some of my ammo and then I break another box, there you go, I'm back to nine ammo again. Okay, so now that we have ammo, the next thing I want to do is the bullet damage upgrade. And the bullet damage upgrade is super easy. 
Um, basically, again, we're just going to duplicate one of our previous upgrades, and I'm going to call this uh, damage upgrade, damage upgrade. And then uh, the damage upgrade, again, we can go ahead and adjust the prices to whatever you want. And then once you've adjusted the prices, uh, all you need to do is create a variable called uh, damage. And then we can set the damage to whatever we want. So to start with, I think we'll set the damage to one, and then we'll increase the damage by one every time they buy another upgrade. And now this is pretty much all we have to do. The only other thing we have to do is go into the zombie code here and then just say when the zombie is touching a bullet, we want to change this to a different value. So we want to say this is now uh, we're subtracting out their damage instead. So here's where we put damage. And now uh, the zombie, how much damage we do to the zombie changes based on what this upgrade is. So now if we click start uh, and we uh, die real quick and we go ahead and we can also go ahead and drag our damage chevron up to here. Uh, you'll see, there we go. So we've gotten a few levels of another level of damage. Uh, and so now when we start the game, it only will take, I think, two hits now to kill these zombies at the at the higher levels. And if we upgraded it one more, if we give ourselves just a little bit more gold, so let's say we set ourselves to 200 gold so we can buy that last upgrade, then in this case, you see if I purchase all of these, and now, I'm just, now you can just kill them in one hit. It's super easy. So that is how you do the damage upgrade. Next up, we want to do bullet penetration, so our bullets can go through multiple enemies. And to do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the bullets here, and we're going to create a new variable for them, uh, for this sprite only, called uh, like bullet health. And then I'm going to go ahead and just set that health to, let's say, let's just as an example say uh, uh, 4 for now. So now what we currently do is we forever check if the bullet is touching the zombie. And if it is touching the zombie, then we wait zero seconds so that the collision has time to happen, and then we delete the clone. Uh, what we're going to do instead is we're going to put a second wait zero in here. Uh, and I'll show, show why in just a second. And we're going to say instead of, instead of just deleting the clone immediately, we're going to go ahead and change the bullet's health by minus one. We're going to take away one health because now it's, it's hit someone. And so the reason we put two wait zeros in here is when you're going across, zombies are kind of wide. And so when the bullet is going across the zombie, you need to wait for an extra second before you actually uh, check if it's touching it again, because we want time for that bullet to travel across the zombie. Otherwise, it might like take away two bullet health just for touching the same zombie. And then the other thing we're going to need is a second uh, when I start as clone. And in this one, we're just going to be checking forever if our clone has, uh, if our bullet health is less than one. So if our bullet health has reached zero, then we're going to go ahead and destroy the bullet. So if our bullet health is less than zero, so bullet health is less than, or less than one, sorry, then we delete the clone. And that's it. Uh, if we start this now, you'll notice that our bullets go through the zombies. Um, let me increase the zombie spawn rate a little bit so I can show this better. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have our zombies spawn in a little bit faster. They'll spawn in in groups. So we will say, uh, create a clone of myself, uh, and then we'll wait one second, and then we'll create a clone of myself, and then we'll wait another second. So we get a couple of zombies in a row. So let's see how that works. So there, there's a couple of zombies. You can see the bullet will pass through more than one of them. So that did, that did all sorts of damage. So right now the bullet penetration is just four, and it will go through basically four zombies before the bullet's destroyed. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to have that tied to an upgrade. So once again, we're going to click on one of these upgrades and duplicate them. And I'm going to call this one penetration upgrade. And now, uh, as usual, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable called, uh, pen uh, we'll call it bullet health, or max bullet health uh, for all sprites. And then we're going to say our max bullet health starts at one and our max bullet health changes by one every time uh, we go through this. We can go ahead and update our prices. This one should probably be kind of expensive. Uh, this is a really good upgrade. And so now the other thing we want to do is in our adventure girl over here in our sorry, in our bullet sprite, uh, we want to instead of using four, we want to just change this to whatever the max bullet health is. So we'll take max bullet health and we stick it in here and this should all work. So let's see if we spawn a couple of zombies right now, you'll see that these aren't going through multiple zombies. It's only going through one zombie. Oh, now here, let's here, let's arrange that real quick where it needs to be. So bullet penetration right here. So now if I buy a car, the first upgrade and we start the game again, uh, you'll see now my bullets can go through two zombies. Usually they're a little finicky, so they don't always do it perfectly, but usually they'll go through two zombies. So there you go, that hit, that killed both the first two. 
uh, we can get the next upgrade uh, and you'll see that it goes through it will go through three zombies on average so now that it goes through both of these guys we can go through this last one too so that's how the bullet penetration upgrades work in the next video we're going to be working on a graphic ui so that instead of showing all this information as variables uh, we can show it as sort of like hearts or bullets or icons on the screen so it looks a lot cleaner